Hello everybody, welcome to The Jaden Show. I am your host, Jaden Cornelius, and I've got a wonderful show in store for you today. I hope you've had a wonderful week. We're getting some more rain here in Cancun, Mexico now, so it's bloody lovely, and oh my God, it was starting to get, but now we've got the humidity and the mosquitoes, so you know, can't have it all, but we've got a little bit of rain, and that's super wonderful. I'm hoping that whatever you've been up to this last week since I saw you last on Jaden's show, it's been wonderful and productive, and I hope you've had a wonderful week. I'm going to end your week with something incredible. But before I introduce you to our special guest, let's watch a bit of him in action.
Are you ready to meet him? Are you? Well, you're going to have to wait, I'm afraid, because it's time for the Jaden Show commercial break. guys i wanted to take this opportunity to let you know about the Jaden show commercial break starting now this is amazing news because now every single week you have a couple of minutes to be able to advertise something you want to advertise so if you have a business if you have an event coming up if you have a new album a uh, art gallery or anything you want to particularly advertise on a show this is your chance to do it March and April 2024, the advertisements are free. So please let me know. Get in touch to me on Jaden Cornelius at AOL.com. It will be wonderful to hear from you. If you are a charity or a charitable organization or a nonprofit and you are advertising something with regards to that, then always your advertising is free. So let me know. You will need to send me a between a one and two minute video around that time if possible um something that you want to advertise and i will fit it into this spot get on i'll see you soon take care buddy. are you sitting comfortably yes it's time to meet the Jaden show's very special guest the amazing mark del judas mark del judas welcome to the Jaden show thank you very much for having me today it's a pleasure how are you doing man I'm great. I'm great. I'm in uh, New Jersey right now. It's hot. I like it. Yeah. My own experience of new, like the New York area, my geography of the States isn't that good. So I'm kind of guessing New, new Jersey and New York are quite close together, right? It's in the state. Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah? Where, where I'm from, I'm very close. I'm like 10 minutes away. Oh, shit. So the only experience I have of New York, I'm watching several, obviously, films and TV programs based in New York. Th there was always gray skies um mist coming from the pavements from the sidewalk and yeah. from pipes on the walls is that kind of how it's rolling so to so you say it's baking hot it's yeah it's pretty we're pretty much there like we're at that point of the year where it's like that like you know that the the heat coming off the black top kind of a thing come Ooh. coming right back up i and like how, i like it like that though i'm okay with it and how does how long does it last for uh, man it'll be pretty hot up until like october oh so you got a bit of time to play with it then yeah we got a little bit of time because like they'll start like really heating up by june and then um right around like the end of october we'll get like really nice weather during october okay and then like november is like when it starts to you'll start to feel that like chill so do you get to the beach much uh here and there you know me and my girlfriend go because she's she's close to the she's close to the beach so is is, it, is, is the more. beach like a swimming pool beach like sea i would yeah right you could swim in it yeah you could swim in it but um lately it's been like kind of it's been a little touch and go with that lady because like there's there'll be sharks out there now really yeah riptides and all that stuff it's been like kind of dangerous but not really the, the times i've went it's been okay well, you know I'm completely yeah. my perception of new york mate well, New York, um, 
Where's the I was, what beach? I was talking about the Jersey Shore, though. Oh, didn't it? Oh, there's a program. Yeah, I was talking about the Jersey Shore. <laughs> I didn't know that. But um, in New York, there's there's beaches there, but like I'm not too familiar with it. Like I've never been to like a New York beach. Well, they sound like they're bloody safer than where you are. Maybe you need to. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like you know, it, it's not like super dangerous, but like I'll hear like stories where like you know you shouldn't go in right now. Like I'll hear that like once a year. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think well, you know, we do need to preserve your talents. So I think maybe stay off the beach at the moment while you're hearing those stories. Yeah, for the moment, we'll wait for um, we'll wait for like July or something. Yeah, when it's yeah. So tell me all about you. Like, when did it all start? When did like this musical streak appear? You know, for little mini Mark. Well, I was pretty much. Well, I guess it always starts when you're a kid. You know, it. Not as far as just like doing it, but like you know experience something you know definitely experience like the moment where you realize like that you're kind of you're gravitating towards it mm -hmm. you were, your, were your family big into music when you were younger my grandfather yeah my grandfather was a singer in uh, naples italy okay well. like, he was like an actual like opera singer wow okay. and, yeah my that side of the family they were very um they were into like the arts like because naples has a lot of like it's like a city in uh, Naples, Italy, you know, it's like, it's like this very, um, so there was a lot of street performers, a lot of like poets on the street. And, um, you can hear that in the music, like in like the Italian folk music, you hear like a very distinctive, like, um, there's a street sound to it, you know? So my grandfather kind of came up from that. And then my dad came here, he was nine years old. So like my grandfather was a big presence for me in my life so it was always just like you know i would hear him sing but then i guess i didn't like i started gravitating towards music my dad noticed it you know he's like oh i he noticed that like i i always reacted when i heard to the performer on the on the tv or like to the performer like li what, whatever we were listening to so it kind of just started from there and then as i got older i was like all right let me learn how to play guitar and then it just kind of Progress from that, you know? What kind of music? I mean, apart from your grandfather, what kind of music were you listening to back in the day? <laughs> um, so it started with you know like Italian music, like the Italian folk singers. Okay. When I was a baby, because that's that was was just playing. That was family that music. Was, that was just on, you know. Yeah. And when I when I started making my decisions, <laughs> it started. See, I'm like a late '90s, early. 2000s guy so i was like i was a kid then so it started with you know the pop stuff okay you know like all that pop stuff you know i was like because like you would see the music videos on on tv they would be yeah. on it would just be like i think uh, what was it called pop-up video i don't know if we had that, that? but we had something called pop like bh1 and mtv and stuff like that when mtv was exactly actually like that music. it was pretty much like that yeah. so that was when it was like really strong so i was like you know i I was into Hanson. I was into Backstreet Boys. Hey. Casually. Yeah. You know, I wasn't like dancing in front of the mirror or anything. Or had posters on your wall or anything like that. No, but yeah, it was, no, no, but but it was like, good pop music. Yeah, it, exactly. So, and then it's, then it, then it got to, then it started with uh, Springsteen. And okay. that was it. That was, that it. was it. That, that was, was it. That was, was like, your path marked out for you then, was it? Yeah, that. And then it was also um, on VH1. They, uh, I taped, I taped, I freaking taped, um, this, um, program. It was called the hundred greatest songs of rock and roll. Okay. And it went all the way, you know, all yeah, the yeah, way yeah. I used to watch things like that. Yeah. So it would be like ranked. And I just saw, I saw everyone, everyone, like, you, like everybody, like the clash, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Eagles, there was like, a, there was like nine Beatles songs. Yeah. So, so I was like, so I hadn't, I was very, I was exposed to that. And then just, I took it from there, you know? So when did it go from being the listener to kind of having opportunities to be part of, like, to be, like, intricate, um, in, into, into, I can't, I'm losing my English, to be more involved. Okay. Music. Um, To be more involved, I just, I took it upon myself. I just kind of started playing guitar. And then um, I didn't have my first show until... 
I graduated high school. I was 18. How was that like a band? I mean, how was that? Was it like a school performance? I mean, how did that come up? It was an open mic. And I, okay. I, I played, I played my original song with these two other guys. Did that be, you started writing at this point. I started writing. I just started writing like, like I, I would write a lot of lyrics. It started okay. with all these lyrics, you know, my senior year. And I, I had it all like, you know, in my, I had it all in my folder and all that stuff. And then, um, yeah. And then like a song actually happened with music. So. Oh, and then we went to an open mic and we just did it. And that was really it. And then it was just like, okay, shows. And then songs, albums, you know, playing in bands. Yeah. And and how was your music received that first time of doing it? Uh, I mean, I, you don't, I don't know. I, I have no, cause it wasn't like, you know, we weren't on blogs or there was no like Instagram yet or anything like that. So and you're talking to a 51 year old, like when I was in like getting famous and stuff like that, it was, there was zero social media. So it was literally like going and doing like thousands of shows to, you know, in just some of the most random places in the hope that they will remember your name when your single comes out. Yeah, exactly. And mm. like, we had no idea. So we were having fun. There was no like worrying about that. No expectations in it. You're just doing what you no like. expectations. We were just doing it. We were, we felt good. We were like, Oh, we just played a show. We felt like, you know, these big shots when we started playing in New York, we thought we were like, cause we, what are we, I was like 19 and like the other guys were like 17. So we thought we were just like, forget it. Like we were like, you know, like we felt like jazz musicians, like, right. but you know, having, Coming up like that without like the social media part, it was good for that point. And then I'm glad it came later when I could handle, you know, the um, I guess what comes with it. Yeah, you know, just yeah. like the push, the pushing of it, the sharing of it, the hoping, you know, you know, hoping that the post does well and all that stuff you know it's i try to a few more rap. people than just your, you know your, yeah, your yeah. family like, and yeah and it's yeah, another like, job mate it is like, yeah. so like i'm from the night i was making i was becoming famous i was in my 20s in the 90s so everything was done by record companies and you were signed to like a record label they would do all your promotions and stuff like that and then when that all ended and now you know i'm still standing because i still love my music doing solo stuff now and you're like fuck I've just done eight hours in a recording studio and now I've got to do like 12 hours sitting in front of my computer just to start getting people to hear what I'm doing. Yeah. And like, I think the way, I think the best way to do it is just to kind of have everything prepared because I don't mind doing it. Like I really don't because it's at the end of the day, it's still, you're still part of the job. Yeah. It's yeah. It's not even like, to me, it's not even part. Yeah. It's part of the job, but it's also just like your, this is part of this is part of like the music, you know. This yeah, is like do, yeah. you know, this is so cool. Like you get to post like you know content. You know, if you really like what you're posting, mm. you know, like you kind of you take a little pride in it. You want it to look good, and you know, and whatever. Even if it say it only gets if your recent post gets less likes than the last post, it's still it's, it's fine, happy, and you're happy with that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It, as long as it's not, um, as, as long as it's not half baked, I, as long as I didn't post it because I felt like I needed to post today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know? And I mean, e even social media is getting harder and harder because, yeah. you know, like, where's everyone? I mean, I was back in the MySpace days where, you know, you would just sneeze and get 50,000 followers. You know, it was yeah. amazing back in the day. And now, you literally have to do a dance routine with a semi in order to get anyone to listen to your music. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's completely changed, but it's, you know, I've done three years of these interviews and I think one of the most common things is just be your authentic self. Like don't, yeah. don't compromise what you believe are, are, are the things that you love and the, and the most precious and sacred things about your job just to get likes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I don't really, um struggle with the social media part of it because well i like to plan a lot of the stuff and you know i try not to have anything 
I try not to not have anything ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get or that. at least an idea. Yeah, of what I want to do. Yeah, you know, like a little action yeah. plan. Yeah, a little bit, like yeah. like nothing, like you know, okay, Monday, yeah. Tuesday. It's not like that, you know. Okay, so Wednesday, this is going to be nah, yeah. like. Well, quarter past four, 32 seconds. We shall execute project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see. At 12, 12.01 p.m., this is how many people are online at the point. I'm like, yeah, nah, nah. But if my mum sees it, that's all right. Anyone else is like, yeah. uh, you know, a blessing, really. Yeah, exactly. So as long as it, like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll judge myself if I posted with the, it, it's all about the intention. So it's like, if I feel like, Oh, like I need to post today because like I feel like I just have to, mm-hmm. you know, because I think like, oh, if I post every it, it that's not really gonna work. You yeah. know, it's like you like going back to what you said, it's about being your authentic self. Yeah, that's cool, man. So what um how did the transition from like who you were becoming to who you are today? Like what were the things you've been in groups, you know, you play guitar. How did it get to a stage where you th- started feeling that you'd found your sound? Or are you still experimenting? Are you still finding your sound? Well, recently, like, I feel like this is the my most, um, you know, authentic. Not that it wasn't ever not authentic, but as far as just, like, um, my own voice, mm-hmm. you know, kind of your own craft. Yeah. But... It's always just, it, it's always like, you know, changing and growing. No, it's yeah. always evolving, absolutely. But there does come a time where you kind of think, yeah, I'm kind of, I feel this is, like, I've done my foundation. Like, now everything is improving and changing and evolving, but I'm pretty much Jaden now, no matter what I do. And is that where you think you are in your music? Yeah, because I feel like as the, as the year, as like, as, it, as like the years like went by, you know, as as long as you're working and like learning, mm. I feel like that's just inevitable. You know what I mean? As as long as you're just searching, if you're always like and open to change as well. Yeah, open open to change, but also like willing to put the work in. Yeah, of course. Always keeping like your antenna. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I feel like that's just going to be inevitable. I feel like that's just always going to be like, um, what's the? I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the word for that. I've been living in Mexico, so my Spanish is still really shit, but I'm also losing my English. So yeah. <laughs> I have no that's, idea that's right, yeah, no. what I'm doing anymore. Uh, it's um it's a process, you know. It's like yeah. um you're as long as you're growing as a musician and as like a rocker. Yeah, you're always open to that evolving because you're listening to new artists, you're taking on new flavors, new ideas and yeah. stuff like that. But I think you know, like when I was younger and I was doing, I was a pop boy. So people are like, oh, you need to sound more black. You need to sound more black. So I tried to sound more black. N- now your voice don't look. No, it doesn't suit your look. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God. So I try and change my look. And then now they don't work because you're not really. And I'm like, oh my God. Whereas now I kind of, I found the basis of Jaden. And so whether I sing Ness and Dorma by Pavarotti or New Rules by Dua Lipa, I sound like Jaden and yeah. I can. I can play with my voice enough. Obviously, I'm not going to sing do a lip I'd like this, but I'm going to sing this and Dorma like that. So, but you yeah. learn how to style your voice and play with your voice, but it's always you because you've now you've done so much work that you actually know where your foundation is. So everything else is play, involvement. Do you know what I mean? It's just all it's all the lovely bits. You're not searching yeah. for you anymore. It's like um it's kind of like a sculpture in a way, you know, Completely. like the and it's all like that's it's like you just kind of you i guess yeah you chisel away until it it's like it starts to take shape yeah you know what i mean and i feel like if you as an artist if you put the work in and if you continue to search and if you keep challenging yourself and asking yourself you know questions when you want to write you know when you have something to say i feel like that's going to happen what do you prefer? Do you prefer the songwriting and studio side, or do you prefer um, prefer the performing, or are they both quite equal for you? Oh, both. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. Songwriting, um, I feel that's where that's where I really kind of excel. Mm-hmm. 
but also the live performance too. Because yeah. I, I grew up watching Frontmen. Right. You know, and I grew up like coming up. I get to say that I was part of that that era where you played shows and it didn't matter if nobody was in the room. Yeah. It, it didn't really matter like yeah. back in the day because you just did it. Yeah. Now today, like I'm sure it happens, but like I think the younger artists take that really hard. Yeah. You know, like they take it. I didn't care. I was like, I'm on stage. I don't care. I'm in Boston right now. I'm, I'm playing on a stick. You know, it, it didn't matter to me. So like that kind of develops you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Absolutely. An artist, you know? And just like playing live is just um it's it's your raw, it's your raw self. Yeah. You know, you get you get to reveal yourself mm -hmm. to the audience, like fully. Like you're just like you're the full, you're a full fully realized artist. Yeah. On stage when you're doing your song. With all its blessings and its vulnerabilities. Yes, exactly. It, the, but that that goes with the two though. Yeah, the vulnerabilities. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and if you're not, you know, because it's I like uh, like to me like the audience. Yeah, like there's different people in the audience, but to me it's like one. It's like one person. Yeah. And because people come to shows, you know, to see to witness a moment happening yeah you know what i mean so and a good moment i feel the audience is going to react mm -hmm. and they react together yeah so that's how i look at it as a as a whole you yes. know so that, that's always like the best part of playing live so what would you think up to now has been like the most thrilling, like the pinnacle of what you've done up till now. Obviously, there's greater things to come as well. But what has been like your most favorite? Like, geez, man, like this is the lick. I'm loving this. What's um, been your favorite bit where you realize that actually everything that you planned on becoming that actually you're becoming? It was when the first single came out. You know, because I, I like a big mindset. Like a, there was a mind shift after that. You know, like having a single out it opened up all these other doors mm -hmm. so and now like i'm playing these shows and like people are singing the songs back so i feel like that's how it starts yeah no i feel like that's like the um, there's that like element x to mm -hmm. it you know where you can't you know you you could put you could look at all the numbers on Spotify. You could look at all the metrics, but you know, there's that like little bit of um, you know, that I don't want to say magic because I feel. I was like going to say magic. I call it magic. Yeah, there is. There's we'll, call it, we'll call it that. We'll call it that. So it just um, there's that little bit of that where you would you you attain it like by just doing it mm -hmm. and being your authentic self. You yeah. know. Yeah, being in there. That's amazing, mate. So when um, when people are, are kind of listening to your music and getting more involved with you, how would you how would you explain your vibe? And do you ever get compared to other artists? I mean, do the people that you, that you've kind of um, I don't know, listened to that have inspired you? Do you kind of emanate their kind of their style, their flavors when you're performing? Yeah. Um... Well, I get a lot of um I'll get bleachers. I'll get Jack Antonoff. I occasion I've been getting this like I get this like maybe once a year, but I'm really happy about it. Okay. I get Steve Perry from Journey. I'm like, I don't know where you're getting that from, but all right. <laughs> like and then um, you know, being from Jersey, they always say Bruce, they say Bon Jovi. Um Yeah, and then just like the um, I guess like you're the you're a filter of like your in influences too you know Absolutely. that's what makes you you know you original yeah you, know, you, you put a all these mixture, a cooking pot of everything that you've experienced yeah. From everyone yeah absolutely yeah, like a fusion you know what i mean so the people that you were listening to back in the day that were influencing you in the start of your career are they still people that you listen to now or has your musical taste become even more diverse than what it was then oh so super diverse Really? Like really, really what's the most and, random thing you have on a playlist random thing yeah, um, like, no well, one i got some i still listen to 
um the italian folk songs sweet i still do that um that's that's still a big part um random i'd say i think the just spotify just kind of opened up these doors where i like algorithms and finding these artists that are still super underground mm -hmm. so uh, I guess like, you know, random, like Atlas Genius, I'd say um, the 1975, of course, you know, 1975 is always there. Um, Bleachers. And then what am I listening to? I've been listening to um, Day Glowers. No. Um, day, yeah. Not Day Glow. Yeah. Day Glow. I've okay. been listening to a lot of Day Glow. And then Daydreamers. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's all, it, it comes everywhere, you know? And then like. I'll have, and then I still go back to like some of the, um, like Curtis Mayfield. I've been listening to Marvin Gaye a lot too. Hey, smooth. Mm -hmm. I just, like the, like the early seventies Marvin Gaye though. Yeah. Not like the Motown, like when like everything got kind of got more, um, depressing, you okay. know, so <laughs> is, that's kind of cool. So yeah. Sweet, mate. So what are you doing at the moment? What's happening for Mark at the moment musically? At the moment, um, well, I just finished my second single, so that's going to come out in July. Okay. That's coming out. Um, and I'm just booking out the summer, booking shows. I'm hoping that um, at some point, like, I want to get um, maybe like a weekender going, like take my girlfriend to, you know, out to maybe North Carolina or somewhere to play like a weekend, weekend shows, at, like out of state. Nice. Yeah. But um, right now, I'm, I'm really focusing on the next single. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm talking with um, my manager right now to see kind of this, you know, kind of make it grow and, you know, just take get it, it out. Uh, take it everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. What are your plans? What are your secret plans for the future? Or maybe not so secret? Well, you know, I want to grow an, you know, grow an audience. I want to um, play shows overseas. You know, I mean, like I would like to I would love to get back to England, play shows um that would be cool so just you know grow as much as possible as a as an artist and you know find um find uh new people to kind of you know affect, stuff, yeah it, it affect in a good way you know in a so positive way you're just about to release your second single are you gonna i mean it's another thing that has been just discussed with um artists at the moment if they're just gonna keep putting out singles or are they gonna do lps um eps and albums because at the moment most of the artists are just saying i'm just gonna release single and then single and then single yeah. and then single is that your plan or are you i mean because back in the day it was like you work on your album and you release four tracks from that but but um yeah yeah well, back in the, it was all the album yeah that's all now, it was. It's just like, I just personally, I still love my music and I'm still doing, I'm just working on a, an, another single now, but um, I'm just happy just releasing things when I get things to release and they're good enough to be released. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'll, I'll, like I'm thinking more on the EP, mm -hmm. EP side, you know, and just do like, they call it the waterfall effect, you know, yeah. the single, 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 then EP. Right. You know what I mean? Like do yeah. something like that. Um, I'm hoping to put out a, like a, a live EP soon. Okay. Just to you know, like just to have it out and yeah. just to kind of have them experience whatever the you know the the listeners just to hear that that version of me. You know, just like a just like I said, like a, a fully realized um, artist just playing. Yeah. yeah. Straight up. Absolutely amazing. So where can people find you? Well, yeah, you can find me on my Instagram. You can find me on uh, Spotify, all, on all social media, like everywhere. Just type everywhere. in my name. Yeah, Mark Del Judas. Um, I'm going to have a website soon, though. Okay, cool. By the by, the summer. So, like, that'll be easy. That'll be even better. So, and do you have any shows planned for the summer? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Being... I, got, um, I got June 26th at the Art House in Jersey City. Um, I'm playing... I'm playing like a full set there. And then uh, July 17th, uh, Groove on Grove Street, Jersey City. So, and then like there's a bunch of shows coming up after too, but those are like the two that but are on um, social media platforms anyway, right? So people can find out where you Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll see that. They'll find, you. They find you. How do your family and your friends think about what you're doing? Are um, they really supportive or they're like, you should have yeah. worked? 
important. Yeah, they they are supportive. You know, yeah. they are. I never even hear, and I have to say, I never heard whispers or anything like you know, like you should look into this, look into that. I've never gotten that. You know, cool. I mean, it's not like they're. It's not like you know, here's the red carpet, but like you know, it's like you know, because people have lives. They have their own lives too. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, do it, and you know. I Did it come to your shows though? Do you, yeah. do they, they get you they get to see you doing your thing in your element yeah yeah definitely when, when there's like a show that's like uh, that i know is like okay like that's like fit or because like i do a lot of um i'm playing like maybe th two three times a week so like i'll hit up open mics so i'm not going to tell them to come to an open mic right because just like the the randomness of it mm -hmm. but um when i have like a show like coming up like you know, on the 26th it's like hey you know, it's a nice auditorium. You could come in, you could sit down and have drinks and just enjoy a nice... Yeah, you know, a nice evening out listening to me. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully yeah. You'll, you'll come over to Mexico and do some shows at some point and get back to England. Oh, let's do it. Oh, I would love to. Did you like England when you were there? I did. I did. Like, we went to... Um, we started out in London. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? Uh, the train station. There's quite a few, dude. Piccadilly, Covent Garden, Leicester Square. There was one more, King's Cross. King's Cross, yeah, the one. Yeah. King's Cross, yeah, that one. Um, yeah, we went to Manchester. Um, Nottingham was like, okay. I felt like I was like, I'm like, wow, there's places like this that actually exist. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, this is so nice here. Um, then we went to North Devon, all farms. That's where I lived. I'm a Londoner, but I lived in North Devon. Yeah, Barnstable and all that area for a while. Yeah, yeah. We, what was his name? Uh, Joe. His his name was Joe. He played for One Man Boycott. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like a, it was a band, and you know, we kind of musos down there, like loads of musicians and artists, amazing folk scene down there as well. Like every pub has got like something going on with amazing artists. It was fun. Yeah. It was really Oh, yeah, we did like three. We did like three and a half, four, four weeks there. So, how long was you in the UK altogether? Four weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was awesome, man. We saw everything. We went everywhere. <laughs> Lovely. So, Thank plans you. to go back at some point? Oh, absolutely. Okay, we need to coincide. I'll go back for a visit at that time, so I'll get to see one of your performances at the same. Man, yeah. Or if I'm in Mexico, I'll let you. Know. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. If you're down, I'll give it a couple of weeks, though, mate. To be fair, because it's stinking hot at the moment. Like, all right, I get. All right, I got, I got you. Yeah, your heat there is it dry heat or humid? Humid. It's oh, always really? just the same as here then. Always humid. Wow. <laughs> so, what are your plans for your new week? When you're back in the studio working on tracks and stuff like that? Um. Well, we on Wednesday I finished the next single, so okay. I'm hoping by the fall, like that, get that third single out by the fall, and uh, maybe like a few other like kind of cool releases, like you know um some alternate versions yeah. of the other songs like an alter like a maybe like a bedroom version of like daylight hours okay like no drums kind of make it really dreamy yeah you know? that would be lovely mate well we've just heard diamonds before the interview and we're going to play out the show with daylight hours as well which is your video which i love thank I, you man thank you super cool video give me some ideas of carrying my microphone with my red cable around with me when i'm Thank you. <laughs> I'm hoping that, yeah, everyone, I know. I know. <laughs> really like it. Really like it. Well, mate, thank you so much for being part of my show. I really appreciate your time. Well, thank yeah. you for having me. This was I fun. Wish you all the success in the world. I'm sure we're going to keep in touch and you'll let me know when the next single comes out and the EP comes out and we can do a little mini show just to kind of promote yeah. it and, and, let in, and let all these people now that have fallen in love with you over the internet, the, my three fans and my next door neighbors, Whip It are now going to be hunting you down on social media platforms to cool. follow you, like you, share you, and tell all their friends about you. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. That would be super cool. Okay, mate, thank you so much. Take good care of yourself, and we'll catch up again soon. Yes, you as well, man. See you later, Mark. Take it easy, man. Bye-bye. What a super lovely guy. Now, I know you cannot wait to go and find him on his social media platforms. So give me another couple of minutes. I'll be out your way, and then you can go and do that. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much for being part of my show, Mark. Thank you, wonderful people at home, for joining me again on this special Sunday of entertainment, frivolity, merriment, and super incredible talent. 
I hope you'll come and see me again next Sunday. And the best way to find out who's on my show next Sunday and when that new episode has been released is by subscribing to this channel. So please make sure you have done that before you leave your seat in front of your computer or television today. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed new week. I'm already excited to see you again next Sunday with another incredibly wonderful guest. I'm going to leave you with Mark Delgidis. This is Daylight Hours. Enjoy. Don't forget to find him everywhere on social media. Take care. Stay beautiful. Bye-bye. Testing me. Oh.